Riding is the art of keeping a horse between you and the ground. Thanks for joining me today in the vet truck. My name is Dr. Matt Witzel with Western Montana Equine. Today we're going to be talking about wound management in horses. Probably going to do a two-part series on this. I'm going to be covering different types of wounds, what you can do before your vet shows up, how to manage those wounds or treat them, and lastly, some preventative tactics to keep your horse safe. While you're watching this, I'd appreciate if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Please leave your questions or suggested topics for my next video in the comment section and I'll try and get to those. The first type of wound that we'll talk about are minor scrapes. These are gonna be your general bite wound from another horse. Typically take some hair off, maybe a little bit of the top part of the skin. Most of the time they don't bleed. These are generally okay with a little bit of triple antibiotic ointment on there and calling it a day. Next up are shallow lacerations. These do go through the skin. Sometimes they bleed a little bit, but the skin edges don't come apart from each other. And most of the time these don't need sutures either. Occasionally you'll find one that can benefit from suturing, but most of the time they don't need it. It's important to distinguish a penetrating wound from a shallow laceration because they can look very similar on the surface, but a penetrating wound, especially if it's close to a joint structure, can be very severe. And by that I mean if you contaminate a joint or a synovial structure like a tenon sheath, it's the perfect breeding ground for bacteria. They get infected very, very easily and can be very difficult to treat. If they are not treated within about 12 hours after it's infected, it can become life-threatening to the horse, or at the very least, will probably produce a pretty profound arthritis that can cripple the horse for the rest of its life. Next up are impact wounds. These can look pretty minor on the surface, but if it's on a leg or over a bone, there's a potential for a fracture, and if the horse starts to show any signs of lameness, it's important to have your vet take a look at him right away. Another common type of wound that I see, especially around the pastern on the horse, is gonna be a rope or wire cut, kind of mixed with some rope burn in there. Those can be really difficult to try and treat because of the burn aspect. It damages the underlying tissue, and a lot of times you'll have uh, significantly delayed healing because of that. The most common wound that you'll have to get your veterinarian involved with is going to be a deep laceration. This is one that is definitely going to require sutures. It can range from a one inch laceration that just needs a few sutures, heals up no problem, to massive injury to the body that requires a uh, long hospitalization at a veterinary clinic and could be very life-threatening and costly. The last type of wound that we'll talk about are animal bites, and by this I mean a predatory animal bite. It can be from a domestic dog to wild animals like bears, cougars, bobcats, coyotes, wolves, angry magpie, who knows. But these wounds are extremely difficult to treat because of the crushing nature of the bite. It can look like a relatively minor puncture wound that doesn't involve any significant structures, but if you try to suture these, a lot of times, the tissue around your suture material just dies and there's no point in suturing it. So most of the time, when I'm treating a bite wound on a horse or other animal, I'm going to be leaving those wounds open and constantly flushing, trying to, to get all that debris and bacteria that the bite introduces into the body out. So moving on to what you can do before the vet arrives once you've noticed that your horse has been injured and needs veterinary attention, controlling the bleeding is gonna be your first concern. The best way to do this, especially if it's on a leg, is just put a tight wrap on there. Pressure is your number one friend when trying to control bleeding. Keep in mind that a horse is a much larger animal than a human. A horse has nine gallons of blood circulating through its body and can lose three and a half of those gallons before it dies. So don't freak out if there's just a little bit of blood pooling on the ground underneath the wound. 
doesn't mean that you don't want to stop it. You definitely do, but you don't need to freak out about it, especially if your horse is still standing. Chances are if you get it stopped, he's going to stay standing. Next up is determining whether or not the wound is clean or not. And this is largely dependent on where the wound is located. If the wound is down near the foot and he's been walking around in a foot deep of mud, that wound's going to be pretty dirty. You're going to definitely want to try your best to start cleaning that out before the vet gets there. But on the other hand, if the wound is on the horse's shoulder and it was a clean cut, I probably wouldn't touch it until your vet arrives. If the wound is dirty or if it has a lot of dry blood caked up around it, I always recommend starting out with either just the hose if it's really dirty or if it's mildly dirty and it's relatively small then you can use some water with a little bit of chlorhexidine solution or betadine solution mixed in there. Those make great antiseptic lavage solutions and the only thing to keep in mind with the chlorhexidine is that you don't want to use it around the eyes because it can do damage to the cornea. You don't want those solutions to be too strong either. For instance, betadine, I put one small squirt of betadine in half a bucket of water. If it's too strong, you're going to end up with some damage to the healthy tissue in the wound. Another side note about keeping wounds clean, if your horse has a laceration on his face or his head, and you're hauling your horse to the vet, please don't feed him in the trailer because most of the time they stick that wound right into the hay bag. And hay is not the easiest thing to clean out of a wound. So once your vet arrives, he's going to be assessing it, probably putting a probe in there to see what type of structures might be involved, may need to take some x-rays, but the last thing that you're obviously focused on is suturing it closed. You got to get that thing closed if possible. There's a lot to talk about suturing, but there's a few points that I want you to know about, and most of them revolve around timing. So obviously, as soon as you can get the vet out to see your laceration, the better. If it's been more than 24 hours, it can be extremely difficult to try and get those lacerations shut with suture, and your infection rates are gonna go way up too. So if you think there's a chance your horse is gonna need to be sutured, don't beat around the bush, get your vet out there right then. Now for the most part, when your vet sews up a wound, they're gonna be using absorbable suture underneath the skin, and the skin sutures, the external layer, is going to be non-absorbable sutures. And those usually need to be removed at somewhere around 10 to 14 days after they're placed. That range usually depends on where on the body it is and how well it heals typically takes lower leg wounds a lot longer to heal than wounds up on the body and that's purely because of the circulation involved in those regions of the body. All right, that's it for today on our first video of the two-part series on wound management. Please like and subscribe and with that, have a great day.